very popular feature in Edge Animate is filters. Now these are CSS filters, and they're kind of hidden unless you select an element. So we have here two elements. We have our penny PNG and our dime PNG. So I'm going to select this one. If I look right over here to our properties, I can open up filters. Now there's lots of different filters here. We can start playing, for instance, with contrast. And in addition to that, you can mix different filters. So we can up the saturation. And at any given point, if we think, you know, this is not the filter or the look that I want to go for, we can turn these back off by simply clicking the X and remove each one of the filters. In addition, each of these filters can be animated simply by selecting one of the add keyframe buttons. Now, the one filter that may seem a little odd is shadow, mainly because there are two different places in properties that you can add a shadow. The first one we'll take a look at is the shadow that's listed under filters. So we have our penny selected. And what I want to do now is I'm going to add in a shadow here of six pixels. And what I want to do at this point is give the shadow some coloring. So I want to simply select shadow color and bring it up to be a little bit darker. And we'll go ahead and close this out by clicking right back in the shadow area. And I can even blur this a bit. So we have a nice soft drop shadow right on the edge here. Now, before we move on to the next type of shadow, we need to talk about the different types of browsers that can view CSS filters. Once you start adding filters in Edge Animate, you'll get a warning if there's going to be any incompatibility problems. You can see this here with this little warning. So I'm going to simply click and it's letting me know applied CSS filters are not currently supported in Firefox, Internet Explorer, or Android browsers. Now, this is not saying that you can't use those filters, but you do need to be aware that some users may not be able to see these filters if they're using a different type of browser. Now, the next type of shadow we're going to take a look at, we're going to go ahead and select our dime element, and we'll go up here, close our filters, and we'll open up this shadow here. And to make sure your shadow's on, you want to make sure the button is selected so it actually gives you information instead of simply saying no shadow. Now what I do here is go about nine pixels for each one. And even though the dime is a ping, the way this shadow works, it's a box shadow. So it looks at the surrounding box of the PNG file. Now we can still add blur and different things like that, but it's still going to be a box. Now the filter shadow is going to start following the exact elements that aren't transparent in the PNG file. So it's following the curves of the penny here versus just simply the bounding box. The other option you have for the box shadow is using the inset shadow. So if I click here, it places the shadow inside of the box. So by using CSS filters, you can alter the look of an element without having to add more to your file size by bringing in a separate element.